Well, welcome back. This is a video I've been wanting to make for a long time, and it's one of the things I really like talking about. This is uh, vintage pearl drums, and these are some of the uh, drum sets that I have refurbished over time, and uh, I'm really proud of how, I, how these came out. And uh, again, it's one of those things when you start looking around at what you do, you go like, is this a sickness, an obsession, or is this reasonable? Yeah, it does take up a lot of room, and unlike guitar players, guitar players can ten, have 10 or 12 uh, guitars, and really, that's not that big a deal. But if you have four drum sets, it takes up a lot. And remember, if your drums aren't taller than you are stacked up, you need more drums. So hang on, and let's, uh, let's get into this. Now you'll see some things with people who collect things, uh, certain obsessions maybe, or certain things that draw us in, uh, but there is a group out there with drummers who like vintage pearl drums, and there's a reason for that. Uh, if I were to uh, add to my collection here, uh, there are some other drums that I would get that aren't uh, pearl. It would be like the, uh, the Tama Art Star uh, Cordia kit. Uh, number one would be the uh, the uh, Sonar Rosewood kit and the Sonar Rosewood Phonic kit. And then uh, probably right up there would be the Stainless Steel Ludwig. Uh, those are all great sets. Now, I'm not trying to say that these are the best sets in the world, but they are pretty good. And if you look at some of these, they've lasted a long time. My first drum set, what got me into this pearl craziness, was a Jazz Rock Pro. And I ordered that one as a sophomore in high school, and I worked at Stuckey's every night after school, weekends, and I also threw papers, and <laughs> that's how I paid for my first drum set. And that thing held me along. Uh, it, uh, it, it saw me through quite a bit. I had that from 76 until probably about 83, and then I did something stupid with it. It was a white leatherette covering, and boy, I'd like to find another set like that and uh, renovate it up a little bit. Uh, but anyway, my, my next set was actually this one here. I bought this in 1984, and I played through two bands on this. We drug it through a lot of bars and festivals and stages and rain and bar fights and everything else. And what goes along with this, this is a maple shell. And uh, this particular maple shell was before they started the X series, really, in, the, uh, in, in Pearl. And right behind me here, if you look at this particular set here, this is the original set. These are a 14, 15, and an 18 floor tom, and a 24-inch bass drum. Now, these were the oversized sets, and, and uh, the reason I bought it was because, well, Tommy Bolton, the Black Frost in Manhattan had one. That's what uh, that was a pretty big influence right there. Um, the uh, the drummers professionally who basically uh, uh, really uh, uh, got me into pearls, of course, Peter Chris with Kiss, big huge set concert toms. Uh, also Gil Moore, Triumph, and uh, he didn't play Pearl, but uh, he played a pretty good uh, set Thomas. And uh, I think he switched to drum workshop. And that was, of course, Neil Part, who recently passed away here from, uh, from illness. Uh, but anyway, these uh, kits are all uh, pretty neat. But the one thing is they are very durable. And they're very durable with the way Pearl made their shells. Uh, you can look on my, uh, on my YouTube channel here and go to the Rock and Roll playlist. And you can see uh, me actually playing these in 1987. And I mean, I'm using... Quantum 3000 Regal tips and just laying the wood to it on a, on a song called uh, uh, China Grove. And uh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun to play. Uh, but anyway, these things held up for a long time and it was one of my first restorations. This particular kit uh, was part of a larger kit that I turned into a double bass. I ended up buying a 22 inch MLX uh, bass drum and then also an MLX 9x13, and that was my kit. It was uh, three racks on the top, 13, 14, and 15, a 22 and a 24-inch bass, 
and an 18 inch floor. And the rest was basic cymbals and, and you know, and, and good snares. Had a, a sonar phonic 12 ply rosewood snare. You can see that in one of my other videos. And then also the, the uh, maple snare that came with this one, 6 by 6.5 by 14. And they were dirt. And uh, we were actually in a uh, place in, I think it was Falls City, Nebraska. We were, uh, I was playing with a band called Crosswind. And we actually uh, got in there, and I mean it was brutally cold. It was one of those north, uh, uh, those northerner kind of blizzards, and everything was below 20. It was just cold. And this is a lacquer set. And we took the cold uh, drum case, which was a huge stage thing we built, and uh, took it in. I took my drums out, and my entire lacquer cracked. I was heartbroken. I was just like, oh my gosh. And uh, these things have been with me through the flood of 93. They were in my, uh, in, in my mobile home when uh, it was flooded. Uh, I did get these out before they got trashed, and that was a good thing. But in about 2006, 2007, the, the stuff was flaking off, so I really had to start doing this. So the entire kit is actually a double base kit, and it goes from uh, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 18 floors, and of course the two, the two kicks. And I uh, sanded these off. I got new heavy-duty uh, maple uh, rings on the front, the hoops and uh, they sound great and uh, I was really pleased with how they came out so this was my first refurb I really didn't want to lose my kit this thing had been with me for you know three decades and I really I really wanted to get it back and it is now back in playing uh, playing shape since then I've now split this up there's actually another kit uh, I have at another undisclosed location uh, that uh, is the rest of the drums and I've split them up as I said I made two kits so this is a this is a different kind of kit this is a 24 inch bass with a uh, 8, 10, 13 and a 15 and an 18 so it's got a larger spread on the toms and I'm very interested in seeing how that has an effect on the tone but you can't go wrong with maple shells and uh, this got me into that that was the that was the next one i did uh this particular one here was the uh, bubinga kit and this took a lot of work what's so incredible about the bubinga kit well it's a 24 by 16 base and i really haven't got this fixed up you notice i've got kick ports and everything i think the kick ports are a great addition to the to the music that I play, the sound I'm looking for, like again, the uh, rock. Um, I need to get a kick port in this one, but before I put a kick port in that one, I need to get the maple rims for that. It really opens up the low end of this, and with the two inch, you know, I'm not real, I'm not a fan of the big long bass drums. Uh, I'm really becoming more and more happier with the low end that comes off of your typical 14 inch uh, kicks. I like 24s of course, but these 22s, these are, these are different ones here. We'll get to those in a bit. But if you look here, this is all, these are all maple shells. These are maple shells, so you can kind of turn, turn it around. And these are all maple. So I went from uh, uh, 10, 12, 13, 14, and then 16 and 18 floors. Again, I like a target-rich environment. I just, I just have fun uh, playing that, and I do like the music that utilizes it. I'm not a four-piece player, never have been, and probably never will be. But anyway, the problems with the power toms, again, these are, instead of having a, eight by, a normal 8x12, you know, have 10x12, 11x13, 12x14, you have much more extension. Now, this 14 isn't as hard to tune, but these two here are a nightmare. Yeah, and the short the the ones are the ones there are, are a little bit easier too. Now this is kind of unique, and this is the first one that I really put a lot of time in. This took me probably six months from the time I decided to do this. This is actually Bubinga mahogany veneer, and I ordered it. The veneer almost cost more than most of the toms. I got the uh, the power toms all together in one set, and then I purchased that one and uh, then I got the 16 and the 18 on their own and, and then added that one. But these are all maple shells and the way I put the uh, veneer on there I actually used a thermoset um, 
resin that uh, you basically iron on. So you lay out all your veneers, how you're going to, to how you're going to lay them out on the to the size, the, the the thickness, and then how long you're going to have it. You try to minimize seams or hide seams on on the places like on the bottom where you would have lugs going across because that kind of minimizes that. But then when you get everything lined up, you just iron it on. <laughs> it's kind of it's it's weird. Uh, and it, it's weird, but it's a, it's a very effective way to do it when you're doing this by yourself. And then that is covered by seven layers of, uh, of uh, lacquer. So lacquer is on all of these. Lacquer is a very hard, uh, very hard uh, finish, and it's less likely uh, to have problems like a polyurethane. And I don't think it dampens things as much. as It acts more like a resin. So it's going to be a hard covering as opposed to a dampening, uh, a dampening. So it focuses it. Now also on these, I did something people don't like. I finished the inside too with, a, with just a sanding sealer and one coat of, of lacquer. I didn't put on all the pretty lacquer like I usually do on the outside. Uh, but I think it brightens up the tone a little bit more. Uh, as I said, I look at drums different than most modern day people. And it's kind of funny, you know, most modern day people, oh, I like things that resonate. Well, okay, but what they do is they take all your stuff into, into uh, Pro Tools and then they take out your sound and they put in some samples. So, well, what are we really arguing about? I like the sound and the voices that come out of these. Uh, this is a little harder to voice. Um, again, my, my go-to is always going to be my Maples. So, those are two, and again, this this one put I, this one was the most rewarding. This one I had to do because I didn't want to lose uh, my I couldn't lose my one time all favorites, the ones that's been by my side in, in most of the bands I've been in. Uh, this particular one was just as I said, re very rewarding to do, and it was really uh, fun uh, to do it and to see that I could actually do that. I mean, it looks like piano. And you know, look at this; it just looks beautiful, and uh, I did that. So, next thing we'll get into is this bad boy right here, wood fiberglass. Just as much as this Bubinga Maple is uh, a one-off and a unique drum set that nobody else has one like, so is this one. Uh, this particular wrap is called Marine Aquamarine Abalone, uh, and it's, it's basically a pearl. Uh, and it is just absolutely beautiful. It looks like it's green sometimes. Sometimes it looks like it's blue. Uh, it depends on the lighting on it. But it's just very, very deep. And it's got some black overtones in there as well. Now, this particular drum set that I got, again, I got it off of eBay, and I basically got a five-piece set that was stripped. And I, and I got pieces. And all it was was the raw shells here for the bass drum, the uh, 16, the... 13 and the 12, the 12 and 13. I had to go find the 14, and then I also had to go find the 18. <clears throat> now, all of these were probably in storage sheds, and every single one of them, I think, was water damaged. Uh, they were stained on the inside. So, in, in order to redo these, I basically sanded and filled all the different areas uh, on the outside of the shell. The inside, thankfully, is fiberglass. The fiberglass shell was a unique add to the compression shell technology that, that Pearl had started of in the 70s. Now this is a, if you look at all these, these have the black badge with the gold, which means these are probably 70s. You see the newer mounts on there? I put the newer mounts on there, but that's okay. Uh, the other ones, uh, the octagonals, were kind of had, giving me trouble. It's very hard to find those and very hard to find parts, so I couldn't find the very set ones, and that's what I used. Uh, but these things were stained, so I had to paint them on the inside, and then on the I had to dress some of the bearing edges, which I really hate to mess with. Once you start playing with bearing edges, you can throw them out. You can have a you can have a, a, a dent or a depression in one area. They have to be absolutely flat all the way across. So I just basically rotated it with a just rotated the drum with like a 150 uh, grit sandpaper, and just did that. 12, 15 times the whole the whole drum set, both sides, and all the all the all the drums to dress the edges. This is a Luon shell, which means it's a mahogany um, mahogany compression shell. Now the compression shell is unique to Pearl, and one of the reasons why it, it maintains its longevity 
Uh, these things tend not to go out around as much as other bass drums from other manufacturers are because the way it's put together, I'm going to show a little video on this, they actually uh, put everything together, it's all glued layer by layer, or ply by ply, all the plies go, come to one point and then they put them into a mold and then compress them and then they cook them, they literally cook the glue into the wood. So that's why you can find these. This is why most people really love the old vintage pearls because they're around. Uh, the wood is the old growth wood and it is very uh, well crafted. You have to consider the shell construction and shell integrity. Let's take a closer look. All woods are not the same and only the finest woods are good enough for Pearl's legendary tone. It begins with hand selected woods chosen for their unique acoustic attributes, cosmetic properties, and precise moisture content. The wood is then milled to exact thicknesses. The seam is the key to shell integrity. Scarf joint seams are cut at each end allowing the edges to overlap and bond over 800% more surface area than conventional butt joints. This provides extreme strength and integrity to the shell while simultaneously eliminating air pockets that can disrupt vibration. The secret ingredient to great sound is the glue. The wood plies are coated with our proprietary acoustic glue which is formulated for each of the specific woods we use. This adhesive hardens within the mold to the same density as the wood it binds, allowing the shell to respond as if made from a single ply to provide superior tone and optimal resonance. We actually cook our shells to perfection. During shell formation, our hydraulic molds are heated to 212 degrees and the glue is literally boiled into the pores of the wood to ensure a complete bond. Superior sound and shell vibration go hand in hand. While the acoustic glue boils, 1,000 pounds of pressure per square inch is applied to create the finest drum shell in the world. No other system uses this exact combination of heat and pressure to create a drum shell with such extreme strength. In front of you is our SST ad with a Hummer H1, almost four tons of truck with one wheel perched on a reference series tom. What you don't see in the ad are the other six drums, one from each series from masters to form that were subjected to this same crushing load and every one survived without a scratch. We did this to demonstrate the superiority of our SST shell forming method. Our goal is to create the best sounding drums possible and SST assures a perfect acoustic chamber for an amazing sound. Most people like the jewels, the jewel like quality of the uh, castings. These are all cast, these are not pressed. And these castings are very heavy duty. Uh, you can break them of course, but, the, uh, but they're absolutely beautiful if you keep the chrome on them and the chrome is susceptible to moisture as well. So, but anyway, the, the wood and fiberglass, the unique thing about this is this has a unique punch. And Pearl recently started remaking or reissuing the wood fiberglass. They are a lot more forgiving on tuning and uh, they're punchy and they got, a, as I said, they got a good voice. These all have different voices. I, I prefer the maple, if anything, but this one is fine. This particular set is probably one of my favorite refurbs because what I got was bare naked shells. And what I ended up with, I replaced the uh, metal with, with, uh, with uh, the metal hoops with maple. And then I also wrapped them in the same material. So I got strips on these. Now these didn't come from Jam and Sam. The rest of it came from Jam and Sam for the fiberglass. But this particular one, I can't even remember where I ordered it, but I had to wait six months to get this stuff in. I was making calls and calls and calls, and then I had uh, something that came out funny on one of my toms, and I had to rearrange the way I used it, but I called up for some more stuff, and they can't even match this stuff. So you basically i got to order this in one sheet. There, there Again, this is a one-off drum. This is a one-of-a-kind one, one drum set. The unique thing about this drum set also is it's not completely pearl. My uh, concert toms, well, they're repurposed hammers. So, uh, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, it's all I could get at the time when, uh, see, look how that blue comes out. It's just absolutely great when you look at it differently. They just pop out. So, anyway, we got a 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, 16, and an 18. And uh, as I said, the voices are fun. If you look at some of the pictures I have, especially the driver's seat pictures, and just about any of these, you sat behind them, you know you're going to have a good time playing it. And that's the, that's the thing about it. That's uh, why we do these. And uh, again, our sickness continues. My sickness continues in a little bit. 
with this particular last one here. And this is another, there's another reason why I really like this particular kit. Now this last pearl kit is a fiberglass kit and it uh, ranges from uh, the 80s and the 81 and, and the, uh, the bass drum actually has the original red flash uh, pearl uh, wrap on it. I left the uh, metal, the metal uh, hoops on there. Haven't changed those out yet. Probably will change those eventually to maple as well. I think this kit has a phenomenal sound. I would love to hear it mic'd up. This particular one is uh, that has a coated ambassador on the uh, batter side. And then all these toms are toms that used to be owned or at least played by a guy named Larry London, a drummer who is a, who is a session drummer in Nashville. He played on a lot of albums. He backed a lot of people up on their, uh, on their uh, tours and whatnot. And again, he was a very good drummer. He did all kinds of unique things. He had a 26 inch bass with loose floppy heads and a big old uh, beater, beater balls, you know, big, big, uh, he's the first one to use the big two inch uh, uh, wood, uh, wood beater balls. He was the first one to get that big, huge uh, uh, bass drum sound. You know, I think he was one of the first ones to really start using gates and gated reverb on it. But these particular ones are historic in the Pearl catalog, and uh, they were given to Larry London to try out, and they uh, were the Extender series. Now the Extender Toms, I'm going to show you a picture of a drum set here that Pearl had, and uh, these things were unique, and what they did is they put these uh, Extender platforms underneath the, uh, underneath the lugs, and they put a one inch larger head on this. And with that one inch larger head, you got more of a timpani kind of like over ring on it. But the problem is, is because that, 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 uh, that head was being pulled down over the bearing edge, the bearing edge had to be a little bit different. These are almost a round top and uh, they're, not, they're not a 45 to the outside. They're kind of, if you look at the crown, the crown is toward the center to the inside of the drum. And, uh, and again, you can see that right on there if you look at it. It's not, the, the top is not right next to the rim. And that's so they could pull this one inch larger head over there. And then you had to take a hair dryer or some kind of heater and heat up the head to deform it to fit. And it was a, it was a hassle. But it did give you a nice uh, tom, open, open, resonant, vibrant sound. Uh, you could actually tune them lower. And, uh, but anyway, one of, the, one of the issues is that with the 14, if you notice the 14 here, it has eight lugs. So it's a, this is a rare bird. And having eight lugs meant that, uh, well, you had to have eight lugs in order to pull that head down that way without it canning weird with just six lugs. So they had eight on that one and eight also on the 15. Now, I, I got the 16 and the, uh, and the bass drum off of eBay, of course, for, for dirt cheap. And then the rack was from Jam and Sam. So it's just fire engine red, and it's got a good look to it, and it's cleaned up. But the unique thing about these, these toms here, they have a different sound. And the reason they have a different sound is because of that bearing edge. And I think they would be great mic'd up because they have, they don't have a lot of, the, the sustain dies off pretty quickly. I mean, it's, you know, I need to tune them. But, uh, that's because of that bearing edge. So what I did is I put Evans Hydraulics on there. And it is a lower voice kit, uh, and it is also uh, not muffled, but it doesn't have the sustain, so you can kind of get, you kind of let the resonance go. I don't really need any kind of uh, uh, mufflers or dampening on this because it's self-dampening. And uh, it, it, it's just got a unique sound. Of course, got pearl batter heads on there as well. So anyway, these are uh, historic in, in the pearl catalog, as I said. They were probably the forerunners to all that, uh, all that uh, extender uh, toms and drum sets they had in the early 80s. So it's kind of unique that they ended up with me. In fact, if you look on the inside of these, it says, For Larry, January 91, uh, 81. So those are... That's the amazing thing about all these pearl drums. 
they last a long time. I think it's because of that compression shell technology. And that compression shell technology takes a lot of abuse. So I am, well, I hit hard. I said earlier I used Quantum 3000s. That's what I was hitting the, hitting the toms on on uh, China Grove, if you go look at that video. Uh, and also, I kind of, I, I can't get cheap beaters. So I really I put my foot into it, too. These things have stood up with that. And uh, again, 1970s, 1970s, early 80s, 1970s, middle 80s, later 80s, and uh, they're still around. And they're, they're tunable and they work. They're not, they're not rounded out uh, at, by any way. But this is why you see some of us on like the Facebook uh, Vintage Pearl Drummers Forum, you see that we're kind of obsessed about some of this stuff as well. It's because they're very good drums. Now, I've also got another drum set I'm going to show you in another video, how I made an electronic kit for cheap out of Vintage Pearl Drums. So, that's it for this. Uh, if you like this video, there's going to be more later on. I'm going to I want to get when I get my get back into my former playing form. I'm going to probably have a video on each one of these and show you the different voicings and the different sounds and what I do like and don't like about each one. There isn't much I don't like about these. It's one of the things when you when you uh, put something together like this. It's kind of like no, I'm not going to criticize it at all. It's fine and uh, I enjoy them. So, anyway, it was nice to get these out of storage, look at them, and uh, clean them up a little bit, and share them with you. Um, and uh, hopefully in the future you can actually see what these sound like and, and see them all set up and in their full glory. If you want to see more, subscribe. We'll let you know what's going on. And uh, if you really like something, go ahead and comment. Don't be nasty or anything. Uh, I'll take those out. If you're nasty on any of your comments or you just basically start anything like, I don't want to hear anything about Stuart Copeland's bell brass snare. Just, just don't do that. <laughs> okay? All right. Well, till later, keep, keep drumming and farewell.